Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Emo Sebo. Thanks for watching my video. I'm going to be reviewing Star Wars Rebels Season 2 Episode 11, The Protector of Concord Dawn. Of course, I'm going to have spoilers, so if you haven't watched the episode, go back and see it and then return to the video. So this latest episode of Rebels gives us a pretty classic story in the Age of the Rebellion. They need access to hyperspace lanes and they need to negotiate in some ways with unsavory characters to get it. This time, however, the Protectors of Concord Dawn are the ones holding their route hostage. For those who know their legends, the journeyman Protectors of Concord Dawn were an early origin story for Boba Fett, back when his name was known as Jaster Mario. Also, the Protector and leader of Concord Dawn, Fen Rao, reminded me of Fen Shiza, who was a male human Mandalorian who joined the 212 man force known as the Mandalorian Protectors, under the name Spar, which meant Mandalore the Resurrector. And from him is where Boba Fett's armor comes from. Nice little trivia there. However, this episode revolves more around Kanan and Sabine, specifically Sabine. Her story has been revealed very gradually, with pieces of her backstory slowly coming into view. Some people say that her story was really forced, but I think the timing was great. This second season of Rebels has tended more towards standalone episodes than a gradual arc. However, this season has been good at giving out Sabine's story in particular in controlled amounts, like I said. That continues in this episode, The Protector of Concord Dawn, which finds the young Mandalorian back among her own people. The Empire is harassing the Outer Rim more and more, so Sabine suggests that the Rebels use an out-of-the-way hyperspace route around the Mandalorian colony, Concord Dawn. That requires talking to the factious Mandalorians who live there, whose aggressive response leaves Sabine and Kanan on a mission to either kill their leader, Fen Rao, or convince him to join the Rebel cause. The central question of the episode is which of those choices will work out better, and putting Kanan and Sabine together allows them to have clear, understandably motivated voices for both of those philosophies. Mandalorian ritual clashes with Jedi tradition in an episode that explores both characters' backstories while also being unafraid to do some damage in the present. Sabine and Kanan share the spotlight, but Sabine has the most growing to do in this episode and has her relationship with an aspect of her own culture at stake. So what has changed for Sabine from the beginning to the end of the episode? In the last episode, to focus on her, Blood Sister, we learned that not only was she a highly capable Imperial Academy SKP, she had worked as a bounty hunter with her friend Ketsu Onyo. Over the last season and a half, Sabine has also learned to trust Hera, which occasionally means obeying rebel plans blindly. Now she comes in conflict with the crew again, in part because of her loyalty to Hera, since Hera is wounded and both Kanan and Sabine are thrown for a loop by their own fear for the captain's life. In the Protector of Concord Dawn, we see an aggressive side of Sabine that certainly existed before, but wasn't as focused. After she decides to kill Fen Rao, she's focused wholly on him, and she declares her Mandalorian house name, the familiar Visla, with ringing confidence. Both she and Kanan change their minds several times during the episode, or appear to. While some of their thought processes aren't quite explained, Kanan seemed pretty set on revenge when he set out to talk to Rao, to the point that the person he chose to come along was Chopper. <laughs> They both come from places of understandable emotion. In conclusion, the Protector of Concord Dawn benefited from Kanan's dialogue and history, but it was Sabine's story through and through, with Kanan serving as the other side of the coin for her. She learns exactly where she stands among the people who make up a significant portion of her personal history. I have a feeling the ideas put in motion in this episode, Sabine's loyalty to the Mandalorians of her own clan, and the Empire's alliance with Concord Dawn, will resonate through the show even more as it goes on. That's it for my review, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Of course, if you enjoyed the content, please like, share, and subscribe. I'm Emo Sevo, and I'll see you in the next one.